Welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. Got a little heat. Wizards coming up in a few hours from here. It's like four o'clock on a Friday. Hope everybody's getting ready for the weekend. Big news last night. Bam Adebayo named to his third all-star game. Congratulations to Bam. Uh, much deserved. He has had a hell of a year and, um, you know, has gotten more aggressive. I know he's been a little bit of a slum skis with the, with the whole jump shot. I know that jumper is going to come around. Uh, it usually does. It comes and goes. That dude has shown new moves, new confidence with it. I'm telling you, I think that this is uh, that that once that gets back. The thing I just love about him, though, I want to continue to see these games where he can go, put his head down, and get to the line and just be a monster like that. Just that 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 to me is going to be uh, the the biggest key because I think that was the the ability in this game, uh, especially when Jimmy was was kind of you know ramping himself up. That was the thing about Bam that I love seeing this year more than anything, more than the jump shot. Because, you know, I think we've seen the now the, some of the places that he can go get that jump shot and the comments that he has in the jab step and, and all that stuff. Man, that is uh, that that has been very, very impressive to see. And of course, you're going to see as a star player in this league, you're going to see some some teams adjust to you. But, you know, to go from what did he have last year? He was five point four free throws this year. He's almost seven free throws a game this year. Huge, huge improvement for him. And uh, has been really, really been a fun player to watch him ascend. I remember, you know, sitting with Alonzo Mourning on a, on a Carnival Cruise line, really, really hot. And I remember asking him about Bam because, you know, Bam is a guy that I really, you know, got on the bandwagon for early because of my uncle. And he's a huge rabid Kentucky fan. And he just was like, hey. This guy, Bam, that you got a lot of people in the fan base were kind of complaining about it because they said, ah, we have Hassan. What are we doing this for? He didn't play much his rookie year, but we could see the quick feet the defense and what he was able to do. And my God, he was athletic. So to see the growth that he has had in the time that really him and Jimmy Butler have been paired and what a duo they have been has been huge. And I thought it was really cool. I don't know if you guys saw this story, but Sham Sharania of FanDuel, The Athletic, he uh, was explaining that there was a meeting before the losing streak got broken and had said that it was a meeting that was led by Bam and Jimmy. And that Jimmy especially was uh, was really, really powerful in the meeting. That was the word he used, powerful in the meeting. And I loved hearing that, man, because I do think that these two guys as a duo – are just underrated for the success that they've had together and that this whole thing is going to run and take them as far as those two start to take him. And then, yeah, and yes, I don't think that Bam has taken the mantle from Jimmy yet, and I don't know when that's going to happen or if it's going to happen. But I do think that these guys, because of what great two-way players they are, can sh they have they have an ability to do certain things in their in their Ability to defend and their unselfishness that a lot of other superstars don't have, especially with uh, with them as a tandem. And I and I think that was bleak as that losing streak was. And my God, don't you lose to the Wizards tonight? But as bleak as that losing streak was, the thing that these guys know is that they have been through a lot of adversity. They have had their backs up against the wall. They have been overlooked before. None of this stuff is new for them. And so to put themselves in this spot where, hey, that we have been in a spot where even our, where even we haven't been as teammates to go from that to having a meeting to looking like, Hey, this looks better. Things that we have seen. One of the things that I found confusing about it was like, Hey, Jimmy, bam, Tyler, what, why do you guys act like you guys have never played with one another? And I get it that there were some things going of like usage and, you know, guys talking about not knowing what right way to sacrifice there is, but ultimately you guys have a default that has worked before and had a lot of success and putting the ball in Jimmy Butler's hands and letting him work with some roll guys and Tyler and Bam having that connection on pick and roll and being able to throw some lobs and get some easy looks for Bam and, you know, inverting that to get Tyler open for, sh for some shots. This is, this is not stuff that is foreign to them. They've done it. I've seen them do it. We've all seen them do it as Heat fans. So that was the, the thing that I found very, very pleasing with that Kings game. Um, and, and hopefully that will lead to some, some real growth here going forward. But I think it's been nice to have a great positive couple of days for the Miami Heat 
with the win. Bam gets into the All-Star game. You got a game against a terrible Wizards team tonight that you can hopefully TCB against to lead into. It should be a fun matchup coming up against the Clippers on Sunday. Um, all of these things are going to be really, really, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great to have all these things start to kind of snowball in a positive momentum. I think with tonight, one of the things that I'd love to see, not because I've bet on it at all, would be Terry Rozier kind of getting even some more comfort into the offense and letting him be himself a little bit more. But you saw the unselfishness that they had had in that game, which was a crazy raid. It was nearly a record-breaking uh, assist output. They took away two assists, so it ended up, ended up being 38 instead of 40. But still, they they really were all trying to find each other and get themselves in a really big, big way. And I am uh, I'm very fascinated to see how this all happens because, look, some interesting stuff is happening in the East. You know, Boston is looking a little bit more vulnerable, right? I'm not talking, I'm not suggesting the Heat are going to catch any of these, you know, catch these guys in the standings or anything like that, but I'm talking about playoff matchups and knowing how crazy they shot the three. I wonder if this is really sustainable. And then, of course, you have the biggest news of the week, which was the Philadelphia 76ers and Joel Embiid and everything that's going on with his knee. You have the Cleveland Cavaliers who have been surprisingly surging after all the injuries that they've had. They've somehow maintained a level that has been very, very impressive, but I'm really going to like, be honest with everybody. Like if you were going into playoff series, do you really believe in the Cleveland Cavaliers or do you believe in the Miami heat? And the same thing kind of goes for the Pacers. Like or maybe Tyler, Tyler Burton is an emerging star. And they made a great move with Pascal Siakam. New York's going to be an interesting one. Cause New York, listen, Jalen Brunson gave the Miami heat a lot that last series uh, when they faced off. Now, they did get, you know, Jimmy Butler on a bum ankle, and that certainly was a factor in that stuff. And OG Ananobi has been awesome for them. But this is, again, one of those things where, like, all right, do you really think that this team can can have all the goods to put away the Miami Heat? Because that's 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 there's a big leap in, all right, now we, we know – that we we feel because a lot of this has felt similar. Like the Knicks were loving their team last year. You were loving Jalen Brunson. You were swooning about everything. And my God, the media is going to oh, great for Jalen Brunson. He's a really good player. Oh my God, are we getting the overload of the Knicks? It's ugh, just like we did last year. And then Milwaukee is like they're such a mess because they fired their coach. Two losses under the Doc in the Doc Rivers era since all of this has happened. So all this being. It, I'm bringing all this up because as bleak as it looked with the losing streak, you know, Miami is still in a spot where they're definitely in striking distance to, to crawl out of a play in. And I really don't think that there is a team in the East that scares them. Um, and especially like you look at the last three games, Jimmy Butler has played. He's looked like Jimmy Butler. And I don't know if this is just a blatant attempt for him to not make the all-star game so he doesn't have to spend a weekend in Indiana and he can go travel the world for a week doing God knows what. But you can just kind of see it. You can just see the inkling of, oh, Jimmy's starting to ramp it up. Jimmy's starting to get going. He's starting to get into that mode. And there's just there's just a, you know, I'm not, not to make it the meme Jim VP calendar about, you know, does this man care about basketball to Jim VP to this is MJ in his prime, but... He follows a pattern. I, I talked about this back with the injuries. I was like, this is eerily weird how this cycle of the games that he misses, when he comes back. The big difference was his two running mates in Bam and Tyler were just <laughs> off the face of the earth. And there were some maybe concerns about, all right, can Jimmy dial it up the way that he did at the same age? But, you know, you let him get one and you let that momentum start turning for the heat. Um you hope that it can get cranking in the right direction and, and be in a great spot. So been a fascinating couple of days over the NBA. The other thing that was crazy was uh, there was this, uh, this whole LeBron thing that's going on where he is, you know, been his, his agent, Rich Paul, great history of the Miami Heat, had come out and said that he's not going to get traded which I'm not very surprised about because I do think that the big, we've talked about this, this is a big thing that plenty of people have spoken of is that LeBron wants to play with his son, but he also wants to be connected with his son. You know, he very clearly means something to him to watch his son. You see the press conferences where he's watching his son play ball. His son obviously had the horrific um, 
thing that happened with the cardiac arrest this year. I don't think LeBron's leaving his his kid. I don't think he's going to go do that to go play with another team. Now, transfer portal is a marvelous thing, and the Canes have a wonderful program. So any Heat fans that do have illusions of LeBron James maybe uh, you know lifting up the, the welcome mat and taking the key, I don't think it's going to be a trade that happens with that, even though they, there was some cuckoo uh, weird tweets about it yesterday. Um, but... Is it something that if he was going to go anywhere else, would I rule out Miami being the No, I wouldn't. I think the fences have been mended. I think that things have are definitely not as frosty as they used to be. So, but I, I think that's 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 something for the off season and, and talking about that type of stuff. Not not right now. But apparently, listen, there's been reports that they've scouted Bronny, all that type of stuff. So, I think uh, I think that those possibilities are for. The summertime, they're not for right now. the The trades, I don't know if they need have any more moves in them. I think, and I don't really necessarily know if they need any more moves. I think they just need their guys to play a lot better and to continue where they where they were at from this last win that they got, and to keep going in that direction. That's the important thing.